Let's move to Pakistan, where the recent lynching of an old ill man in Punjab province shows that the mobs in the Muslim majority country are confident today that they have religious and social legitimacy to be judge, jury and executioner in whatever they deem as blasphemy. The state too is unconcerned as it uses the legislation for its own motives. A report. A viral video from Pakistan shows the corpse of an innocent person being hung on a tree by an Islamist mob. 41-year-old ill-man Mustaq Ahmad was stoned to death for allegedly burning some pages of the Quran. Though this recent incident happened in Khaniwal district of Punjab province, the culture of mob lynching is spreading in every corner of the country. Just a few days ago, a Sri Lanka national Priyantha Kumara was assaulted by a mob of hundreds of people before being dragged into the streets and set on fire in Sialkot. The rising trend is being fueled in part by state organs and authorities who corset and align with radicals bent on violence instead of upholding their duty to protect communities. The recent months and years in Pakistan have progressed with continued killings in the name of Islam and the country is increasingly becoming a dangerous place to live in. Mushtaq Ahmed's lynching is more of a symptom. It's a symptom of severe societal collapse setting in. As you know, the economy is collapsing. You know, the avenues and opportunities for uh, people simply isn't increasing. They brought in CPEC saying that, you know, CPEC will be this major uh, uh, infrastructural development which will aid in the industrialization of Pakistan and create jobs. Clearly, that's not happening. So, you know, everybody there is now frustrated because all their attempts at industrialization have failed. Plus, there is significant radicalization. And if you notice, you know, once the Taliban has taken over power out there uh, on the other side of the border in Afghanistan, uh, plus the complete failure of law and order within Pakistan, this was just a situation waiting to happen. So it's the comeuppance that we've all been waiting for. The hatred in Khaniwal has deep roots. Pakistan has endured about 33 years under four military dictators, all of whom co-opted religious groups to legitimize their own rule, playing along with their demands for Islamization through new laws and Sharia courts. Even civilian governments use these groups and their mass appeal for electoral gain, entrenching Islamic extremism. It is nothing but Pakistan's Prime Minister's hypocrisy when he tries to convince the world about the real message of Islam, as the same religion is being used to justify violence and murder in his own country. Those who unleashed a reign of terror under the banner of the TLP recently, those who lynched Mashal Khan, Priyantha Kumara, and many others used religion as a means to invoke the killing instinct of mobs. Not only that, culprits who have been awarded punishment for killings are now being released under controversial Islamic laws of Pakistan, laws which have been formulated by the successive governments of the country. Recently, a Pakistani man convicted of murdering his sister in an honor killing was acquitted after his parents pardoned him. Wasim Azim had confessed in 2016 to killing Kandil Baloch and was sentenced to life in prison in 2019. So it's definitely uh, the appeasement has been part of it. It's not been the entire part of it because, you know, uh, there's also been the sort of uh, uh, lackadaisical attitude to uh, 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 these organizations by the government. So it's not just appeasement. It's also been the indoctrination that has been happening, the promises of jobs not kept up and the crumbling economy that have added to everything. Nothing is ever monocausal. It's all these things that have gone in to produce this sort of violent, uh, rage filled mobs that we're seeing in Pakistan, which is happening almost every week, if not every month. Violence in the name of religion is dangerously rampant in Pakistan. The in-depth roots of religious extremism are turning the entire inhabitants of the country into religious zealots. The ruling class, whether military or civil, 
has exploited religion to give legitimacy and popularity to its regime instead of curbing the menace of fundamentalism. Fundamentalism, extremism and terrorism have grown so much that now it has become difficult for the Pakistani government to control this menace which wants to take the society to pre-Islamic days.